Greetings all, welcome if you're new, welcome back if you're not. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at Studio One's sound set files. Sound sets are pretty much just a zip file with some extra, some extra goodies involved. They are what Presonus and third parties and private individuals use to pack up uh, the various Presonus assets. And so when you go to download your Presonus uh, Studio One, you'll see a bunch of those downloads, downloads are sound sets. And all they are is just uh, various assets from presets to MIDI files, sample files, et cetera. So we're gonna talk about how do you build them and uh, also how do you tag your own loops uh, that you might include in those sound sets. So it's pretty simple. What we'll do is start over here. Let's jump into the browser and go over. We need to get access to a extension that Studio One or Presonus provides for us. We go into the cloud, go into Presonus Exchange. It's the first one. If you've not done that, you just need, you'll need to sign in and you'll use your normal Studio One or PreSonus login information there. Second one down, or at least on my machine, is extensions. Inside there, you'll see several sound set builders. Uh, pick your OS, and the most recent one, they, it says four here. Uh, in the actual extension itself, it says five, so I'm not really sure if it just auto-updates and it's out of sync or not, but four is probably your most current, but pick the highest number you see. Anyway, You'll see an install there. Go ahead and hit hit the install button and it will download just like a regular PreSonus um, asset and you will be good to go. You can confirm that it's installed. If you go over to Studio One, Studio One extensions, go over to program extensions and you'll see sound set builder. As I said, uh, mine shows up as five. I uh, don't really know what that is from a syncing perspective, but uh, should be all good. All right, once that's occurred, uh, there's nothing to run, there's nothing um, you really need to do, because what it does is it shows up as a right mouse um, option when you look at a file folder. So we're gonna just go up to files, go to file folders, and we're gonna work in just, just your regular, just like you're using uh, your file browser, we're gonna go into a directory that we're interested in. In this particular case, it's not down underneath audio projects, example sound set, we can explore uh, the content that's in there and so forth. Uh, we can move data back and forth, for example, from other directories using your uh, file explorer and pack up that directory, put things in there that you want. Or you can drag things in uh, from a, a song. You can leave these things open or you can work with these directories as, as uh, just regular file directories. But once you're getting closer, once you know that there's a directory that you would like to pack up as a sound set, what you need to do is select that particular directory, right mouse click on it, and now you'll have an option that says mount folder as sound set. These are the two options that the sound set builder creates for you. So we're gonna mount this folder as a sound set. And really what that does is it basically tells the operating system, uh, it kind of opens up some things uh, and allows the uh, some of the Presona stuff to work with it, pretty simple stuff. Uh, but it's also fairly opaque. So there's some things about uh, how this works that either I've not found or is a little bit tough to tough to find. There's really no information in the help, standard help file. There may be other more detailed information. And if you know of any, if you know of a technical document around this topic, please leave in the comments. I've installed databases and uh, database readers and tried to do some things, but Finding details is a little bit tough. When you do mount it, you'll get an option to set some properties. Uh, you can give it a title if you want to apply a unique, a good, or a, a unique identifier uh, to this particular sound set. You can. It can be helpful if you're a commercial producer. Or you've got a, a bunch you just want to keep track of and not worry about naming conventions. Uh, you can add some pre. I'm not really sure. I say that I'm not really sure what this preset element is. Uh, and maybe it just doesn't see any presets. It might be a special flag. We can maybe experiment with that in a little bit. Uh, you can add an icon. In this case, we'll just, I'll just add Studio Geek here. And uh, then vendor description, things like that. None of the stuff is required. All right, so we'll say okay there. So now once that occurs, you'll see that it is set up as, or the icon shows up as a sound set, just like your sound sets that you have over here in, uh, all right, over here in your, be a little quick on my mouse, uh, just like you're looking at your sound set directory in Studio One. So if we go back to our files, 
This is the directory we're working with. Now, again, we can um, move things in here at any time while it's uh, mounted like this. I can drag a file in, for example, if I wanna drag a WAV file that I'm working with. Now, as I drag, by the way, as I drag an audio file into a directory in PreSonus or in Studio One, you'll see uh, you get some options on the type, the way you'd like to save that file, straight WAV, um, way with if there's any rendered uh, FX or FX, uh, an audio loop, and there's some variation or there's some benefits of all three. I won't go into the details there, but to just hit your shift key, and you'll see that X probably if you have on your video, uh, the shift key just toggles through the type of file you'd like to uh, leave it as. So in this case, we'll just leave it as a WAV file. We'll drop it into the root directory of the example sound set that we're building. There we have it. Now we can just just a little uh, I had. Uh, now we can look at some of these other ones. Uh, we dropped in some, uh, just some uh, loops here, as well as some drum. Typical stuff you'd expect. Now, if we had a preset, go, actually, let's, now nah, let's not do that right now. Uh, but if we had other, uh, had presets, or if we had, um, uh, instrument setups that we wanted to drop in here, we could just drag and drop these things into the directory, uh, just like you would do it if you were dragging and dropping to just a regular directory, because that's really all it is. So once we're done, right, once we're ready to go, and uh, let's talk about where we're gonna go once we're done, and that is why would you want to do sound sets? Uh, there are pros and cons. Once you package up a sound set, you can't edit it just like a, just like a zip file, uh, and there can be reasons you want to do that. There can be just some simple archiving reasons. I use it for situations where I don't want to have a, uh, or I have a set of, set of sounds that I use pretty much exclusively within my Studio One setup, where I don't need to worry about accessing them in another, in another DAW. There are some just organizational reasons uh, to do it. Sometimes it's just nice to be able to just go to one place and things are pretty, uh, uh, pretty clear and pretty tight. So personal decision, but uh, this is how you do it if you want to. So once you're ready to go, um, you right mouse click, and now you say unmount the folder. All right, so unmount the sound set folder. Actually, let me, let's go back and remount that for a second because there's something I forgot I wanted to show you. And uh, we'll say that. Now, uh, one of the cool things about working with sound sets is you can go back, you can go in and you can label your your audio files, all right? You can tag them, right? So you can only do that when the sound set is enabled. So once you have a audio file enabled, uh, I'm sorry, sound set uh, enabled like this, when I right mouse click or I click on a sound, all right, I now have the opportunity, I see a new option down here for tags, okay? Now I can hit the plus sign and I can add various tags directly from here. Also, if I double click on, or I click on the tags button, I get a tag palette. Now, real quick to let you know, this is not extensible. At least I've not been able to figure out a way to extend it. Like I said, this is where I pulled up a database re, uh, uh, in a viewer and tried to look at to see if I could extend this palette. I could not, uh, and I've not seen any text or any descriptions on how we can do that. I think it's hard coded. I've not been able to find a database file in the PreSonus or in the Studio One directories that uh, seems to represent this, but that is something you'll have to be aware of. Now, what I can do is I can go in and I can uh, highlight, let's say, uh, we'll just, let's let's tag all of these right now, just as loops, for example. So we come through here. The other problem with this uh, bad design is it's, it's not um, alphabetized. No, it doesn't seem like a big deal, you're, but you're sitting down here and you're trying to find various tags and if your eyes are, are uh, bad as mine, or if you're just sick of trying to look through things, it gets a little bit old. But regardless, uh, we're gonna go in and somewhere in here is a loop, all the character is a loop, right? So we can just drag a loop onto this, and now you'll see that we have these little green icons on here. That Those icons tell you that those files have been tagged. As we move down through, as you look down here, as we move through them, we have those particular tags. And we can add some more if we want. Uh, let's just say, uh, let's just, for grins, let's go to, let's, I'm using my uh, clicking and then shift to grab, just like typical Windows. 
environments. And I'm gonna, instead of dragging from the palette, I'll just go into here and uh, let's see here, instrument. And I think there's a synth in here somewhere. There's a synth. Again, not being alphabetized. Uh, some kind, sometimes not a big deal, but other times it kind of gets on your nerves. So uh, that's pretty simple there. Uh, one thing I have found is if you wanted to do something custom. So for example, let's say that I want to call this, uh, we'll call this example. All right, so we can label that particular, we can label that guy as example. However, unfortunately what happens then is we don't see it over here. So if we want to do it in other ones, right? It seems to be kind of a kind of a pain, but what we can do is if we start at the bottom or the last one and include the the file that has the tag you, that we want. So in this case, we want the example tag, right? So if we, if we started here and drug and shift down to here, we don't see the example tag, but if it's the last one we select, we get it. Now I can just drag that and drop it onto any of those and I get example applied to all. Call that kind of the hot tip of, uh, uh, tagging, if you want to use it. Uh, I've spent way too much time in the tagging space than probably I, I should, but uh, it was helpful for a couple different reasons. Anyway, so once we're done with that, uh, we can unmount the, the sound set. Okay, so we're going to unmount it. Right mouse click, unmount. So now we're going to right mouse click, and now we have two options available, and we're going to do pack the sound set from the folder. So we're going to pack it. Again, get a chance to make some last minute changes to our, uh, um, we'll, we'll just put in here, actually put in here. Tag. And we'll call, put this vendor, put me geek in there and uh, we are good to go, All right? So we'll pack this up. It'll, uh, not a, I didn't have a whole lot of files. The first video I made the mistake of having way too many files in there. I had to sit here and wait for it to pack. That particular example is about half a gigabyte uh, in about three, or the previous example is about half a gigabyte in uh, three minutes, and this was about 75 megabytes. Okay, so now we have our um, example sound set. The original is just where we left it, didn't touch it. Uh, inside that sound set, uh, we can then move this into the uh, Studio One sound set directory which is this guy, and if we want to know where that is, just right mouse click on any of the those guys and say show and explore. And our sound sets are there. And we're going to go in and we're going to pull the sound set that we just built. And we're just going to drag this guy over into the sound sets. Going to copy it there. Again, this is a good example of just being able to then archive off the original, all the rest of the files somewhere. If you've got a machine that's kind of dedicated to Studio One, that kind of stuff. So we will go ahead and shut that guy down, shut him down, and let's now go out and just refresh our sound sets. And now uh, we should have, what do we call it? I forgot. Uh, example sound set. That's what we called it. So there's our example sound set, and uh, there's our files as we'd expect them. And depending upon how quickly Studio One updates its cache, we should be able to go into our loops and search for our loops. And within our loops, we can go example, audio files, and there's the files that we listed up. So hopefully, Hopefully that gives you a uh, quick look at how to work with sound sets. If you've got any uh, technical information or, or ex experiences with building sound sets and so forth, please leave them in the description. It's one of those areas. If, if we've got, um, if you've got a lot of files, it can certainly be handy, but there's not a lot of information on how to work with it aside from uh, what, what we found so far. So thanks, have a good day, and we'll talk at you again.